Hello everyone, so today I'm going to be talking about alternate history as an idea and what I see as one of its biggest problems, the presence of politics within alternate history. Now, just to be clear, all history and all alternate history is political to some degree. That can mean a few things. Uh, personal beliefs can sometimes shape the finer details about the world you would expect to happen. And also, some alternate historical fiction pieces are capable of asking very thought-provoking questions about the world we live in. The other side of that, though, is that the specific things said or not said when explaining or talking about something can indicate someone's political views. For example, if someone were to make a video about Germany winning World War II, and you either don't mention, downplay, or gloss over the way that they tried to exterminate Jewish people, Romani, LGBTQ plus people, disabled people, and so on, that is a statement. Even if it was something the person subconsciously did, that means that person, subconsciously, didn't think about those events enough to bring them up in the video. They weren't important enough to them when thinking about the video's content. Basically, if it is something so fundamental as the Holocaust is to the Third Reich, or slavery is to the Confederacy, there is no way that someone who is legitimately trying to talk about these events, or nations, or whatever, just 100% accidentally doesn't bring them up, or accidentally glosses over them. It is either conscious or subconscious bias. Now, just to be clear, politics, and more specifically, the involvement of contemporary belief systems in history is inevitable, and thus it also is in alternate history. Of course, there are those undeniable facts, uh, the dates that wars started, the number of people in someone's military, and so on and so forth. But history is not one long string of information that's just there. History is written by people and people are biased, people can make mistakes, and people can have ulterior motives. Those belief systems of the historians or alternate historians when they're looking at historical events is incredibly important. For example, it wasn't until relatively recently that we've started to look back and hold a very serious candle to non-traditional, non-heterosexual relationships and societal standards in ancient societies as the acceptance for those types of relationships increases in modern society. Another example is how there were many archaeologists in the early 1900s that were specifically seeking proof for biblical stories and biblical claims known as biblical archaeologists. More recently, within the past few decades, there has been a lot more scrutiny on what those archaeologists found because those original people were going out specifically looking for evidence to prove whatever it was they believed. This is where historical revisionism comes into play. Historical revisionism is the changing of understandings about historical events and times. And on its own, that's not an inherently terrible thing. If there are new facts, then we should definitely look at how those new facts change our understanding of history. Then there is political historical revisionism where the facts are misconstrued and altered to satiate whatever political agenda the person is looking for. And Stephen Molyneux is the perfect example of a political historical revisionist. In one of his most popular videos before he was kicked off of YouTube, he reinterpreted and redefined Roman history to suit his own political narrative, even if the facts didn't align very much or at all with the views he was pushing, or with what actually happened. It's all about the conclusions that they come to. Namely, why something happened, and what does this mean? In Molyneux's video, for example, he says that the grain dole, a form of welfare back then where grain was imported and handed out to keep it simple, is what helped to lead to the fall of Rome, and thus, welfare is bad. The problem is, the grain dole, as he talked about it, started centuries before the Roman Empire fell. Almost half a millennium, in fact. And without the grain dole, much of the city of Rome would have likely starved. And so clearly, 
In that instance, Molyneux is using history to push a specific narrative, and he's changing the facts, or he's playing with the facts, to get that to happen. Now, how does this relate to alternate history? Well, just to put it simply, there are a number of people that have used alternate history to push an agenda to try and downplay very serious historical events or terrible tragedies that have actually occurred in history. Or to try and justify their current belief system by saying, hey look, it wouldn't have been so bad if X had happened. This is a form of political historical revisionism. And that's because these agenda-based alternate history narratives rely on either altering or ignoring certain historical facts. Well, let's go back to the first example I brought up, the idea of Germany winning World War II. If someone were to make that video and then go on to say that Germany would be super prosperous after winning the Second World War and that they would instantly become a new superpower and rival America because of how wealthy they were, well, that would be revisionism. The problem there is that that would be ignoring the fact that A, any German victory would most likely only come from a very early peace deal that would leave them with very little actual gains. B, the German economy was on the verge of collapse for the entire war because it was entirely built on the war. And C, the amount of unrest inside a newly formed German empire spanning Europe were it to happen would rip the nation into pieces almost instantly. Now, I want to be clear, does that mean that any author or YouTuber or whatever that makes an alternate history where Germany wins World War II is a Nazi apologist? No, that would be ridiculous. You need to look at what they're claiming and what their intention is. If the purpose is to try and shine a light on modern society somehow, or to show how terrible a specific aspect of that society would be, that's an entirely different situation. With the novel Fatherland, for example, even if the actual results in the novel were unlikely at best, that isn't what the book is trying to do. It's not trying to be accurate to what a German victory scenario could look like. It's trying to show what living in a police state where you're just someone trying to do what's right is like. It shows the overwhelming power that an authoritarian state has, even if it tries to portray itself magnanimously. Now, where you do run into issues is if someone makes something about, just going with the same example, Germany winning World War II for the purposes of trying to be historically accurate. Or if they say, it's just a little theory I wanted to explore, and then they gloss over, downplay, or ignore the worst parts of what the Third Reich did. There are also people that do try their best, they just miss the mark because of some underlying reason, like, like not understanding the privilege they come from when they view these historical events, or they just don't fully understand what they're talking about. Uh, that's a mistake I've made in the past, and so has basically everyone else making content like this. An example of this was in my Civil War video, where I sort of clumsily explained that the uh, terrible institution of slavery persisting may have led to more of a self-abolition by slave states as the institution was becoming less economically viable. Uh, it was clumsy because I didn't fully explain that when I said this, I was trying to say that the southern states were whiny little babies, that when they were told, by force, to treat black people like humans, they freaked out, created hate groups and policies that are often still either actively there or have just morphed through time. I don't think that's true anymore though. I don't think much would have changed in the way of race relations uh, because of how much the oppression of black people is so ingrained in so many American systems still to this day. What's important is to learn from your mistakes and listen when people point them out. Don't just get defensive. Anyways. There are pieces of media all over the internet, mostly by amateurs like me, just making videos or writing blog posts that are extremely troubling to me because they aren't just misguided attempts to talk about something but floundering due to ignorance, rather it's them fully understanding the facts and what's being said and then willfully altering them to suit their own narrative, often pushing a very hateful and far-right narrative. But the involvement of the far right in the historical community is its own topic, which I might cover some other time. Thankfully though, it's not, as far as I know, 
in the mainstream alternate history shows and whatnot. Uh, to be fair, I don't really watch much mainstream alternate history stuff, but I didn't find anyone calling these shows out for glorifying Nazis or anything. Just because it isn't in the mainstream media though, doesn't mean it isn't worth talking about. Because I know that the majority of a lot of people's media consumption, myself included, comes from places just like YouTube. Uh, just to summarize what I'm trying to say, to anyone that hopes to create some sort of alternate historical world, make sure you understand why you're creating it, and make sure you know what you're talking about so you don't end up glossing over or downplaying some very important aspect of the issue just because it helps your narrative or because it's uncomfortable. History and alternate history can be and often is uncomfortable, and that's why it's important because it lets us see humanity in different lights, and often in its truest light. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed my video, go ahead and leave a like, it really helps me out. If you want to see more of my content, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell to get notifications for when I upload. If you want to support me and my channel a little more, my Patreon is linked on the screen and in the description. If you have thoughts on anything I said, or just want to say hey, leave a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching, this has been Historical Hindsight, and I'll be seeing you soon.